What's up everyone, Mason McGavick here. So I got the EcoBoost Miata behind me and today we're gonna be doing adjustment on the coilovers. So right now I have silvers and a coilovers front and rear. Basically uh, what I wanna do today is measure overall drip travel, compression travel, and make sure that I have these, it's a two piece body. Basically the bottom part of the, the coilover is adjustable compared to or uh, separate from the actual preload adjustment. Similar to BC coilovers, field suspension has it and a couple others. To get the proper suspension uh, characteristics that you need, there's people on the internet and a lot of research that shows that you want one third of your travel to be droop, two thirds to be compression, uh, and that's based off of ride height. So um, I've already done some measuring. I don't have compression travel because I've, I need to take the springs out. I did some measurement on the, uh, the droop side so what I want to do now is uh, basically put the car on the jack stands, take off this side right here, take off the wheels and tires, take out the coilovers, remove the springs. From there, I can measure, uh, I know the ride height distance. Basically, I'm measuring from this point of the lip to the fender, front and rear. And from there, um, I'll calculate droop, jack the, the front end up with the tire on, to or jack both sides of the car. Um, basically jack it up to see where uh, it is hitting the bump stop and then adjusting the lower body uh, depending on on uh, that so you can you can lengthen the shock to engage the bump stop earlier uh, basically what that would do is prevent you from bottoming out uh, or you can length or shorten the entire shock body to uh, have more compression travel so right now on the front we have 1.625 inches of droop, droop travel from ride height. And on the rear, I have two inches of droop travel. What made me really start thinking about this was I did some research and people were measuring droop and compression travel of Zetas. And basically on the front, there's about five inches of suspension travel on the rear, about four inches. And just based off those numbers, it kind of concerned me about the rear. Right now I have droop about 50% of overall suspension travel. And I noticed in pictures when I look at how much compression travel is, you know, if I have four inches of com uh, compression travel, the tire is going to drop down to about here. And I have some pictures of, at autocross to where the fender is down here, or actually, yeah, right about here. Um, and for me, that makes it seem like we have a lot of droop, but what it does tell me is I was on the bump stops. So... With that being said, I really want to dial this in. Now, if I want to, I, I got to find the full stroke, take the coil spring off in order to calculate that. But what I need to do on the rears, I'm thinking, is shorten the overall uh, shock body, which means screwing the, the bottom mount part higher up. Right now it's uh, maybe got three quarters of an inch of the, the body left or screwed in. So there's quite a bit of adjustment more. So we're gonna go ahead and see how close we are on settings right now. And then um, if we need to, because this car has to get aligned before the season anyway, we're gonna be uh, getting a corner balance and uh, a full alignment anyway from SPS Garage or Performance. So I think right now is basically the perfect time as any to go ahead and reset and dial in the center lines for our coilovers. So I'm gonna set up the, the GoPro on a time lapse, go ahead and get the car up on jacks, start taking the wheels and tires off, and we'll just get started from there. Now, to do this, uh, I need to disconnect the front sway bar. That way, this side can be independently raised and lowered uh, without having any influence from that side. Luckily, I don't have any rear sway bar in the rear, but I do have one up front. So I'm gonna go ahead, disconnect the sway bar link back here. That should give me enough, uh, enough uh, movement. And then I'm gonna go ahead and remove this coilover and we'll just do one side at a, at a time. So with this link removed, uh, I already have the measurements, like I said, of ride height and uh, droop. So now, basically what I need to do is just remove this uh, coilover, a couple third, or I think it's 12 millimeters up top, and then in a 17 millimeter down here, and then we'll get this coilover dropped out, and we'll start working on disassembling. I am gonna take some measurements uh, once I have it out to see how much preload I have right now. 
and we'll just go from there. And I'm just now realizing this because I put this bolt in uh, before this tie rod, and I think I should have went the other way, that you have to remove this tie rod. That might or may not happen uh, with your car. But I'm removing this tie rod just uh, to get this arm out of the way for this bolt. And I also forgot you have to take out this upper control arm bolt, but that's nice and easy. All right, we got the first shock out. So like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and do some, uh, some real quick measuring, try to get a, a baseline, and then go ahead and take the spring off and we'll get going. All right, so I, re or I removed all the preload off the spring. Now I'm gonna take this top nut off Simply disassemble the coil over and we'll be ready to uh, throw it back in there without a spring. So it's hard to do with one hand, but basically what I did was I took a measurement from the top hat to this measurement here with the shock fully extended. It's about six and a quarter. And then I compress it and do the same measurement and I get three and a quarter. So this shock has three inches of shock travel total. All right, so after some quick math, I know I'm sweating, it's kind of hot in here. I'm probably open up a garage door. But uh, taking a three inch shock stroke and the front Miata motion ratio is 0.69. So you take your uh, three, divide that by 0.69 and you get 4.35 essentially. And that 4.35 inches is the travel al or allowed at the wheel uh, or how much the wheel can move up and down. Now this is calculation. We're still gonna go ahead and verify it uh, since we're this far in but it's 2.72 inches of compression travel. All right, so the front right now is at 37.3% uh, of droop travel. Pretty good. All right, so overall uh, front travel after the motion ratio is 4.35. Now, again, that's calculated. We're still gonna measure, um, but with our front compression being about 2.72, or I just subtracted what, the, uh, what I know the front droop is of 1.625 inches, so front droop is 37.35% of total uh, travel and total compression is 2.75, uh, which is 62.5% uh, of travel. So overall, not too bad. I'm probably not gonna go ahead and modify this. Yeah, let's see what we do when we put it all back together and see if we need to uh, make any adjustments, but I don't think we will. Put it all back together. Let's take a measurement right here. Four and a half inches from uh, the fender or from the wheel to the fender loop. Now let's jack it up and see what it does. So I went ahead and uh, changed up my location. So right now the car, the spring is bottomed out. So you can see, can't move the wheel. Um, so with that being said, um, I might order some bump stops for this thing at some point. Uh, let's try to figure out where the maximum uh, compression is. That way I can subtract and figure out some bump stops. So lowered it down a little bit. It's so right there is pretty good. Okay, so So that's hitting the fender pretty good. That's also hitting the fender pretty good. All right. So right there, let's go ahead and get this measurement now. Let's just call it exactly one inch. So right now, what I can do is take my measurements of uh, full compression, full rebound, and overall stroke, back calculate it to shock stroke, and that way I can order a set of bump stops that will allow my up travel to go up to about here, and not allow me to do anything more. And just doing really simple math. So remember, full droop, it was at 4.5 inches from uh, lip to fender clearance. Right now we're at one. So backtracking three and a half inches of suspension travel at the wheel. Now, I'm gonna do some real, real quick calculations and see how much uh, shocks, uh, shock travel we need to limit. So power of using a calculator. Uh, basically right now, uh, front shock travel, again, is three inches and uh, full usable is 2.41 or 4.2. Um, so that means 
that we need about a half inch bump stop. Uh, I'll probably end up going to a three inch bump or three quarters of an inch bump stop if they make one. I need to do some research and actually find out. So I'm actually gonna go look up some bump stops and see what, what I can find. And then we'll move forward putting this thing back together if I can get something uh, here reasonable. All right, so where we are right now, uh, we calculated and I talked with some, uh, like the guys uh, over at SPS Performance. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a bump stop just to help limit up travel. Uh, and then I talked to him about overall droop travel and compression. And he says, you know, right in the middle of that, that range. So he's not too concerned about it. I am more concerned about it on the rear. So right now, actual travel, droop makes up about 47% and then compression or bump is gonna be about 53%. I don't wanna uh, mess with these too much. It was good that we found uh, that we need bump stops and we'll just go from there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, leave this side apart. I do have extended lower ball joints and new tie rods coming in uh, probably next week. That way we can get this thing aligned and, and all good to go. The reason why we went with extended lower ball joints is to help us get a little bit more out of our um, camber adjustment and all that. Uh, right now, I think it's pretty well maxed out. So that'll allow us to have some more fine tune. Now on to the rear. All right, so we have done the exact same thing. Right now I have the, tr the rear shock fully bottomed out and I still have clearance. So I don't need any bump stops in the rear. So that's a, that's a huge win. Uh, I am gonna go ahead and measure full compression and that'll get me my calculations for droop versus uh, compression. And I'm confused again. So uh, anyway, the shock has 2.25 inches of stroke. Okay, so that's good. Actual wheel uh, movement is four inches. This should have 0.75 inch or uh, 0.75 to one motion ratio in the rear. So I don't understand how that all works out. Uh, my 0.75 motion ratio is from Google, so who knows if that's accurate or accurate or not. Overall, I have four inches of suspension travel in the rear, two inches of droop, two inches of bump. Still kind of up in the air deciding whether or not I want to adjust that or not. Uh, I could try shortening up my coilover and uh, you know get get rid of some of that droop, but I'm really not sure. So uh, I'm gonna wait around, see what this Facebook post I put or I put on trackable Miatas actually says, and then make a judgment call from there. So it, it might just be perfectly fine the way it is right now. Long story short, I'm probably gonna go ahead uh, for now and put the rear coilovers back together because I don't need any bump stops and any changes I, uh, I need to make, I can make on the car. Um, on the front, I do need to order bump stops. So we're done for the night. Uh, talking with the guys at SPS uh, Performance, they think the droop is good. It's not overly biased towards droop or, or, or bump. So overall, we're good. Uh, now, it's just a waiting game. I did go ahead and just order some kind of universal. They're the upgraded uh, bump stops off of uh, Flying Miata. Should be here in a couple days. Uh, the new ball joints and tie rods should be here soon. I got that tore down. I need to take the inners out. Um, I knew I had a little bit of tie rod play, but luckily um, we are replacing both. But you can't really hear anything, but you can definitely feel it in your hand. The inner joint on the, the passenger side is starting to go a little bad. So it's, uh, it's good that we're replacing it, especially before the alignment. So anyway, I got this coil overall tore down. It's ready for the bump stops to be added as well. And uh, that's that. So I'm gonna leave off tonight and we'll do the install in a later video, but all tore down, ready to go. And just some, some maintenance again. I know these are kind of boring videos, but we got corner balance and alignment coming up here in March, dyno day in March, all kinds of good stuff. Thanks guys. Make sure you guys like, subscribe. Peace out.